Good morning and happy Monday to everyone. Uh, welcome to another Operation Separation. I'm your host, Shell Shapiro. Uh, with me today is the amazing and fabulous Rachel Shart. Um, I am excited to have this discussion with, with her today because She's helped me so much in my business, like navigating like ways to position myself so that I stand out. And so I'm excited to dive more into this so that other people can learn how to do this as well. Rachel, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Rachel. Um, I am a web designer and SEO expert. I've helped my clients rank for hundreds of keywords and help them make uh, over a million dollars from organic traffic in 2021. Um, I live in New York City with my cat, Cashew, who is napping, but sometimes he senses when I'm on a video chat and tries to make an appearance. So. Well, I've, I've cat sit for Cashew before. Yes. Uh, and yes, so if he makes an appearance today, I won't be mad about it because uh, because we're, we're good friends, right? Um, so I'm really excited to talk more about um, SEO from a perspective of LinkedIn today. Yeah. And I recently saw you talking on Instagram about how you revamped your LinkedIn profile not too long ago. Mm -hmm. um, you're diving headfirst into the platform and like you quickly got some pretty good leads, like just by making a few key changes. So like for everyone that's using LinkedIn or just getting started, what was it that you like focused on when you, when you revamped your profile? Yeah. So really like boiled down showing up in a search anywhere, Google, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, it's figuring out what people are searching for and then how do you come up for what people are searching for, right? And LinkedIn actually makes this really easy because you see the job titles that people are using. So it's not some secret hidden thing. Yeah. It's just what it, what is it that you do, right? And so then how does that relate to the terms that recruiters are using or companies are using? And then that... Um, your title line and LinkedIn is the most searchable as well. Same same goes for Instagram. That name line is the most searchable. Um, and so putting that there is how you're going to show up for what people are searching for. Okay. All right. So when you did your, your – so it does behave differently, though, than like when you're trying to rank on Google or – or on YouTube or a different search engine, was there anything specific that you were looking for when you did some of your keyword research on LinkedIn? Yeah, so I was looking at jobs under the SEO umbrella and then the types of jobs that I would actually like to do or roles that I feel like fit me yeah. um, versus just Oh, you know, like I don't really like building backlinks, right? So I'm not going to, I'm going to avoid roles that are really heavy in building backlinks. Um, but looking through the different job titles, um, and especially to if you don't want remote work and you're in person, narrowing it down, looking at jobs within your area, because, you know, who knows? Um, but yeah, I would say that I really noticed a trend when I was looking at it. Like yeah. every single job title was using SEO specialist. Um, and I never even thought of like referring to myself in that way. So I would have never thought to put specialist in that like descriptor title line. Um, yeah. And obviously, like I think, you know, I am – not usually in the mindset of like, oh, as a, as a freelancer, as someone who runs my own business, I've never put myself in the mindset of like, what are companies looking for? Um, so I think that probably if you're watching this and you're on LinkedIn often, then you have a good sense of what people are looking for. Um, but I mean, it's kind of like your resume, right? You want to use like those keywords that yeah. get picked up by whatever system they're using to like filter it. Um, so just kind of matching, um, 
what people are doing. Yeah. So one of the things that I really love that you're, you were just talking about is how you were searching for things that were relevant to things you wanted to do more of, as mm -hmm. opposed to things that were just w under the umbrella of SEO like, uh, that you didn't really like. Uh, like you use the example of the backlinks. Um, and I always try to tell my clients as well that like, I want to focus on the things that you actually like doing, the things that you want to do more of. So I like that you broke it down a little bit to give an example of how you navigated that for yourself. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I want to remind everyone, whether you're watching this now or in the replay, like this is something that Rachel does on the regular, like whether it's on LinkedIn or Instagram or somebody's website to rank for on Google, um, she really hones in on the keywords that you want to be searchable for, but that your audience is actually also searching for. So it's a mixture of the two. It's not just like, what are people looking for? Let me sign up and put myself and describe myself that way. But like honing in on what you actually are capable of doing and want to do more of, I think is, is really key there. And what I'll say too is like the upside of optimizing your LinkedIn or your Instagram is yeah. oftentimes you'll see results right away. I'm like, uh, with your website, it can take sometimes four to six months to start ranking. Yeah. So, and, and you can change it without losing any like rankings. Right. So like if you decide, Oh, I think that this is like what I want to show up for, like as my title, um, and you're not after two weeks, three weeks, you're not seeing anything from it, you can change it. And it's not about, you know, getting the crawlers to pick up the changes, right? It's just you change it and it's there. Yeah. Um, so that can be the also the upside to these platforms. Um, but the I think the best part about SEO on any any platform is it's when you are posting social media, right, let's use Instagram for an example. Oftentimes there is, there's like these two phases of getting people to hire you, kind of educating people on why they should work with you, right? And then yeah. kind of what you do versus like when people are searching for what you do on Google, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, they already know that they need you. So there's not like these are warm or hot leads, right? There's not this uh, education gap where people don't know what a career coach is or yeah. don't know why they would pay someone to do SEO, right? So um, it can be a really great way to get people who are ready into your funnel. Or yeah, that's so true because you're already here for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I love what Linda's saying. Translate it into their words. What are people looking for? And answer in their words. Um, what? So, okay, let's 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 take this from two sides. Because one, I think that Linda's Linda's comment here is is really great in terms of like helping people pull out their SEO and their keywords and stuff. But let's let's approach this question as if. She actually wants us to break it down and answer it in, in people's in people's language right now, like if they're as if they're not an SEO expert or mm -hmm. a keyword or a LinkedIn profile um, strategist, because that's a lot of what I do too. What are people looking for? Like what should they be searching for and looking for on this platform if they're looking for more connections or leads or to position themselves better? Yes, yeah, so specifically on LinkedIn, I would look at job titles, the title that they're giving the role, um, because that's most likely, well, not most likely, I know that that is what, when they're searching, when a recruiter is searching for you, or someone's searching for you, that is what they're using. Yeah. Um, and I think that that is why it's so important to not come up with like cute, names like as fun as like puns can be or getting creative with your title or getting creative with like the names of your services or whatever it is right or like clothing items that's a really good one right so like if you name your dress your black dress in your e-commerce store 
um, Belinda, right? Then, but no one's searching for that. If they're looking for a black dress, they're searching for a black dress. So it's also really important that like, as nice as it can be to be like creative, it's, that's not, people don't know that that's what you're calling it. Um, yeah. So, so like a better way to approach that, if you want to still have that like creative element to it would be to say, we'll stick with the dress for, for right now, for your example, uh, like the Belinda black dress, mm -hmm. um, so that you can still give it that name, but then describe it the, for what people are searching for. Right. Like my, so I knew that everyone was using SEO specialist, um, but I feel like strategist is kind of more in line with what I do. So I yeah. just need it SEO specialist and strategist. Um, so right. Like the example we gave, like you can, you can put the two together. Um, what's nice about LinkedIn is you aren't as capped on characters as you are um, on Instagram and same with your website with SEO page titles. Um, 60 characters is the max. Um, and we ideally want to keep that between 30 to 40 characters. So you can have a little bit more leeway with LinkedIn. And if you want to add something creative on top of targeting what people are searching for. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we do get actually I've always thought that like the LinkedIn headline was was very short in terms of only giving us like the 300 characters. But it is way more when you look mm -hmm. at it compared to other search engines. So what are what are some like keywords that you would say for people to stay away from though? Like I see a lot of people that say that they're like a LinkedIn ninja or like no, oh, don't do that. Uh, they they could they add some like it sounds yeah. cool. It's they give themselves like a cool sounding title. Um, but who who in the right mind is actually really searching for a ninja? It's like the first part of it. So like are there any and I'm for anyone who's using the word ninja in your in your headline, that's that's totally fine if it like fits your brand and like works for what you're doing. But like, are there any like specific things that you see that people absolutely shouldn't be using? Well, I would say the biggest problem usually is that people just don't have keywords at all, whether it's on their profile, their LinkedIn or their Instagram. Um, so, you know, the point of doing SEO anywhere is to come up for people who've never heard of you before, right? So a lot of businesses, if they haven't optimized their website, only rank for their business name or they only come up on Instagram for their business name or same with, same with LinkedIn. Um, so I would say to absolutely make sure that you have keywords. Um, and then this isn't so much true for, for LinkedIn, but always look at like, like you might think that, oh, this really aligns with me, right? Um, this like fits my services page or whatever. But then the actual results for that search term are all blog, all blog posts, right? So that wouldn't really, you wouldn't really rank for your services page on your website. Or maybe it's like you thought this term applied for you. Um, this is, um, a good example, I just worked, uh, I did keyword re research for a brand designer yeah. and there was a whole bulk of branding related keywords that had to do with like branding irons. So we want to double check that even though we think it's a fit, it might actually not be the fit that we think it is. So making sure that you're looking into not just, oh, that relates to me, right? But like what is actually coming up? For that term because it might be not what you think it is sure um i had, had had another like juicy thought in there and i lost it somewhere along the way um but what what i'm thinking about right now in terms of like keywords and searching um segues a little bit to hashtags mm -hmm. and using those on on linkedin is a little bit different but like how do, you, how do you go about separating yourself using a hashtag versus like some something, how do I say this? Um, like if you're creating your own for people to find you mm -hmm. versus using like a hashtag SEO expert. 
um, which is might be more searchable. Like how do, how do you differentiate between the keywords that you're using in your hashtags? And that might not just be LinkedIn relevant. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll speak from my Instagram knowledge. I I this is a good point that I should do this on LinkedIn too, but with Instagram, there are two parts that are searchable, your actual profile and then your posts. And I actually looked at what was coming up on the Explorer page of Instagram for like across different industries, across different keywords. And like 90% of the posts that were coming up on there used that keyword in the caption and as a hashtag. Um, so it's really like signaling and i'm sure it's the same for linkedin it's signaling um the crawlers the algorithm that this is what the content is about um so it is really important like right if i'm making a post about keywords i would want to use seo keywords in my caption and as a hashtag um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing if you do want to use a branded hashtag, but I wouldn't say, you know, that is not what's actually really going to help you expand your reach. Um, right. So it is okay to use that. It's just like not really going to help you from an SEO perspective, because remember, we're trying to get people to find us that have never heard of us before. So that branded hashtag is only good if someone's trying to you know, look through everything that is related to our business. But if they've never heard of us, then they're not looking, they're not looking through that. Yeah. So it's a good strategy to like, if you want to build up a branded hashtag for yourself to still use it in combination with other ones that people are already looking for. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I love what you're saying about um, like adding in that keyword into the caption as well, not just using it in the hashtag mm -hmm. because it like adds that extra point of like relevance right. Uh, right. To, you, to like solidify that the hashtag is relevant to the post, but also yeah. to solidify what you're talking about for, for anybody who's seeing it and for the search engines that are crawling it. And I will say this, uh, don't put it in though if it doesn't sound natural. I mean, I feel like there's a way, there's always a way to work your caption, right? But the point is that people read it. So yeah. if it, sounds weird like people are going to be like what the heck like so it's important that it also just like sounds like a normal like you talking right so we don't want to just like keyword stuff just to have it in there we want it to be for humans um yeah and we so want it to be relatable to yeah. like things yeah. that people want to see and hear about yeah. So if you're just using random hashtags and random keywords throughout just because you think that's where you want to be, right. well, what's the point if it if it doesn't relate to what you're talking about? Right. Right. Yeah. Like no one speaks like so if I was trying to rank for like Houston massage therapist, I wouldn't say like like I am a Houston massage therapist and as a Houston massage therapist, I love what I do and my Houston massage therapist hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Like you wouldn't keep calling yeah. out the same exact thing over and over again. Yeah. Um, okay. So now I want to talk a little bit more and I don't know if you've had time to dive into this. So forgive me for putting you on the spot a little bit here. Um, what are some of like the, I know you're a metrics person and we look at like the data and the analytics behind like the the hashtags and the search results that are coming up for somebody's website mm -hmm. or like looking at the the analytics on instagram and what's how much how much you are reaching your target audience what are some of the data points that people can look at on linkedin have you had a chance to take a look and and dive into that to see how it's related so i haven't looked at anything regarding posting on LinkedIn, but obviously I think that it's very clear, like if you're getting messages from recruiters or companies, um, yeah. you see an uptick in that when you change your your byline or your name line. I don't know all the terminology yet, but <laughs> if you're seeing like, I, I changed my name and then I put like open to recruiters or whatever, and I got like 10 messages in one day. 
So to me, right, like before I wasn't really getting and maybe like once a week or once every other week. So like that was a signal to me like, oh, this is this is work. working. This is exactly what I needed to put. Um, so that is a very easy metric to measure. Um, OK. Um, are, is there anything else that you're keeping an eye out for when you're navigating uh, LinkedIn more than more than yeah. some of the other social media platforms out there? I would say something, too, that's important is to pay attention to the quality of like the leads or the messages that you're getting. Right. So like. If say that like my salary expectations are like I want to make at least 80K. Right. And then I notice that all of the messages or leads that I'm getting through LinkedIn, uh, the salary is budgeted for like way less, like 50K. So then I would want to look at, okay, so clearly this keyword that I'm targeting is seen as more of like an entry level role. So then I would want to go back and figure out, okay, so what can I target that is going to be for a more senior role or um, just get me higher quality leads? Um, And it's the same, same with Instagram. So like, are you attracting people that can actually, you know, with, are within like your set packages or whatever. Um, so I think that's really an important part of it too. Um, I talk a lot about vanity metrics in regards to SEO um, because it's not, unless you're a blogger, it doesn't matter how much traffic you get to your website if it's not converting. So bloggers make money from traffic because they run ads. But as business owners or as a company, like we're not running ads on our website. So we only make money from that traffic if it converts. So I would always say that it, again, quality over quantity. I would rather get 100 hits to my site a month from organic traffic with 10 like qualified leads than 1,000 hits in zero. And like when that happens, that's a sign that like your strategy is off, right? Um, So again, it's a little bit more simplified when we're doing it for LinkedIn and Instagram and Pinterest, but but making sure what we're targeting is actually like in line with what we want to attract. Yeah, I mean that's that's so true. Like if that if if you do see that you're getting leads and getting messages from recruiters and and other other people looking to work with you, but you're only attracting people that are willing to pay this amount, but you want to be over here, then mm-hmm. something needs to shift. And I love how you you've said that like you you got some qualified leads right away mm-hmm. um, just by making some of the changes, and that let you know that you weren't going in the right direction, that you mm-hmm. did find those right keywords, and that you did like pull them out and use them correctly. So some like it subtle shifts that people can make that like if they're not reaching the people that they they want to ultimately reach then like they might still be on the right track but some some retargeting still probably needs to happen and i will say like no matter what you're always there's no perfect thing that's only going to get you qualified leads right it's just that if you're not getting any it's important to kind of weigh um how many qualified leads you're getting? Are you getting any? Because there's yeah. always going to be, especially on LinkedIn, there's always going to be companies that have under budgeted what is appropriate for your skill level and knowledge. And you're just going to have to be like, yeah, pass. Well, progress over perfection, right? It's never, yeah. it's not always going to be perfect. LinkedIn is not a set it and forget it platform. But also, um, you're right. People, people and companies under budget because they often don't realize what goes into the work that's behind the scenes or Mm -hmm. like what your, what your value is, what you're worth. Um, because they don't know the reality of all the, all the things that you put in and you could summarize that super like really thoroughly in your profile. You could talk about that in your posts or your, like whatever you're sharing on the platform, but people don't actually know until they see the work sometimes. And to to the work that I do a lot on, on LinkedIn is reminding people to add value. Um, add value so that people can get to see their worth 
for for free a little bit too, um, which I know we're talking about making more money and getting qualified leads yeah. here, but like you want people to like know and trust you. And so it's a combination of one, using the right keywords and making sure that those are things that people, your, your target audience want to be found for, but then also like, making sure that they trust you along the way because they might be finding you. But if, if you're over here and they're over there and you don't find any way to like meet them in the middle, meet them where they're at, then they're never going to convert. So I love being able to like talk about all the different angles of the way that you can position yourself better. Yeah. And what I'm finding about what's nice about LinkedIn too, is like you really can post your expertise because the people who are usually with like, if we're being recruited for, for a company, the person that is going to be interviewing us or like above us or whatever, they usually also are experts as well. Um, and I think something that I struggle with and a lot of people struggle with is that how do you share your expertise, like what you were saying in a way that is meeting people on their level? And a lot of times with um, Instagram or even like your website, right? Like if you list like what's included in your packages or whatever, like I found, especially with SEO, I want to list all of the technical terms because that's what I'm doing. But most people don't know what the heck I'm talking about. They don't yeah. know what that means. Um, and with LinkedIn, like a lot of times you're finding people who work in the same industry as you. And so they understand that. And so you don't have to think about like, how can I, you know, simplify this? I can really showcase my expertise in a way that is going to set me up to get this senior role or whatever, but you're not setting yourself up to really get a senior role on Instagram because you have to educate people on like what like just the such like basic level right and so if someone who knows seo sees that they're gonna be like oh well maybe she's working on such a basic level and it's like no it's just my audience doesn't have an understanding of like anything yeah uh, so yeah and and it it's worth noting that these are two different platforms. Like, mm -hmm. as you said, when you're on LinkedIn, you already know what you're here for. Hopefully uh, you already know what you're looking to get, what you're looking, what your goals are with this platform um, and who you're looking to build that like, know, and trust with. Whereas on Instagram, let's say, um, cause that's been a, a good, I think comparison yeah. for today's conversation is, is, and, and with your audience in particular, you're teaching them the basics. You're teaching them how to build it up and learn how to do things either on their own or how, or how to take it off their plate. Like, but either way, it's from a beginner standpoint because they haven't dealt, navigated any of that yet. Yeah. Um, so the dynamic is, is different and you do have to show up a little bit differently to build that like know and trust in a more basic level as opposed to people here that are, that are like, all right, well, something is already working for me now. How do we make it better? Right. Right. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, whew. It's a lot to unpack in a short amount of time for yeah. sure. Um, I do want, so I do want to remind everyone that operation separation isn't just about like the, the, the challenges that you're navigating, like in your current job, or your personal life. Um, it's not just a mindset change or, or like a transformation journey that you can be on. Operation separation can happen from all different areas of your life. And so it's relevant here in the fact that Rachel has such great insight into ways that people can separate themselves so that they can stand out and position themselves for their next thing, for the thing that they want to do more of. Um, and so it's, it's the combination over the weeks of these mindset coaches and experts that we've been having these conversations with, but also the implementation strategists and experts that can actually bring that to fruition and help you get there. Um, so that is, I'm so excited to dive in with, with Rachel today and have more experts that can implement the changes. Um, and really like, she again, she's helped me so much 
uh, with my website and, and even Instagram to, I love looking at all her posts to like, see how to position myself better or little things that I'm like, ah, I wonder if that's applicable on, on LinkedIn, not just Instagram. And then I go ahead and I go down that rabbit hole and make all those changes. And I'm like, ah, okay, now I need to hire Rachel again to make sure I didn't all screw it all up. Um, so yeah, I, this Rachel again has brought so much knowledge to what I do and only made my services and my business better. So I know that she can help do the same for anyone who's watching um, this conversation for sure. But I wanna give Rachel the opportunity to talk more about ways that you can connect with her directly. So I'm gonna turn it over to you again to right. share some of that. Well, like everyone watching this knows, I am uh, new to LinkedIn, but I'm excited because well, not, you know, I don't, I've had my profile since college, but I feel like I am someone that always likes to learn. I love data. And so I love like figuring and figuring out how, how everything fits together. Um, so over the next few weeks, I'm definitely going to be experimenting and looking at things the way I did to figure out kind of like the Instagram SEO algorithm and what's going on. Um, so I'm excited to like dive into that. So obviously you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I am very active on Instagram. Um, my handle is Rachel Sharp Design. Um, and as well as, you know, information on my website with the different packages. I'm very passionate about um, SEO education, especially as a woman in the industry. Um, I think it's 60 or 70% male dominated. And um, I think that, well, I've had this experience too. Sometimes when you're learning SEO, um, there's just maybe people who, it doesn't make it feel safe to learn and ask questions. Um, and I think SEO is so powerful that I want people to feel like it's accessible to them and that it's not too yeah. hard for them to learn. I don't want people to feel stressed when they think about their website. I want them to be excited. Um, so I kind of have two pieces of SEO in my business um, where I work one on one with clients and like um, mostly in a consulting role, helping them. Um, we froze. I'm not sure if you guys can hear Rachel right now. I'm going to try and figure out what's going on. Tech glitches. Bear with us one second. I'm just going to mute myself so I can try to bring her back in. My computer just shut and off. We're back. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. It's okay. Uh, so just rewind a little bit for us because um, you were in the middle of talking about um, how you work one-on-one -on -one with people yeah. uh, in a consulting capacity. And then I think that's where we froze. Yeah, so with the, um, I found that just to make it more accessible, what I've been doing is creating these roadmaps for people where I analyze all their data um, and then create like a step-by-step for them, for them to implement it themselves. So um, with the SEO roadmap, so what search engines are looking for is the most trustworthy and relevant search results. So how we build that trust and relevance is through the three types of SEO, technical SEO, offsite SEO, onsite SEO. So in these roadmaps, I'm looking at all of that with what's going on with their site and then creating step-by-step -step of how either they're gonna be fixing technical SEO errors, 
or setting up their Google My Business. Um, and then some people opt to do both. Some people just do one. I do a keyword roadmap where I'm doing your keyword strategy and I give you an outline for every single page of your website. Um, and then some people do want implementation, but a lot of times, like I said, I really want to um, empower business owners to do to feel like they're in control and have an idea of what's going on. So I feel like this really allows um, them to kind of learn what um, uh, understand what their strategy is and what's going on with their site to implement it themselves. So that hopefully in the future, um, you know, they're like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, that I had this, I, I forgot to add alt text to all the images on my website. So now whenever I add a new image, I'm just gonna add the alt text versus if I'm just doing it, you know, people are always updating things on their website. So I think it's really important to have that understanding, to have the tools. Um, and then I also have a SEO kind of education part of my business for whether people want to learn it just for themselves or if they are like a web designer or copywriter who want to offer it to clients as well. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so many great ways to, to work with you. Um, I will for sure drop all of your links um, into the chat, um, into the description and put it out there for everybody to get to know more about how they can work with you and, and start that conversation from there. Um, so again, that's, that's link connect with Rachel. Rachel on LinkedIn, connect with her on Instagram, and I will drop links to um, all of her programs so that you can see which one works best for you guys. Uh, I'm so excited for, for the conversation that we had today um, because I think it's so important, no matter what platform you are on, to position yourself intentionally um, for the things that you wanna do more of and so that the right people can find you. So SEO is so relevant. Um, <laughs> And, and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to make it easier yeah. for people to find you? Yeah, as as you, um, I think I think you still have it on your website. Although, you know, as we change things all the time, um, you used to have a, a line on there that said your um, your website should be your best employee, yeah, or something like that. And I love that because your your website and your social media platforms should be working for you. They should be set up so that things can just be that much easier, especially yeah. when you are doing so much work on building up other people's too. Like it should already be like implemented and ready to go. So yeah, I, I love that, that quote that you have there. Um, I love working with you and learning more about the things that you do and what you can bring to people. So thank you for such an amazing conversation. For anyone who's been watching, thank you for joining. Um, again, I'll drop Rachel's links into the chat and the comments and tune in next week for another Operation Separation. I've got another amazing guest. You can find us on Shell Station. Uh, if you're not already following, please go ahead and do so. You can watch the replays right here. You can also catch them on YouTube. And uh, oh my God, just gets better and better, right? So, yeah, thank you so much to everyone for being here. And this is us signing off.